Hello everyone and welcome back to Ben's Pantry. Today we're going to do something slightly different. I found some magazines from the 1970s called Super Cook. It's an encyclopedia and I found one recipe. It's called Arang Nagushka. It's a Hungarian dish. It's a Hungarian bun, very similar to a cinnamon bun. And I'm going to recreate it directly from the recipe. I have not Googled anything yet and we're going to see how it turns out. If you want to make this recipe at home as well, the list for the ingredients is in the description below. We're first going to start by pouring the milk, two tablespoons of sugar and one tablespoon of butter into a small saucepan. We're now going to put that over to a low heat, stir until the butter and sugar have dissolved and once that's done we can remove it from the heat. So you now want to let this mix cool until it's reached room temperature. Once it has, we can now beat in the egg. Once the egg's all mixed in, we can now pour in the water and the remaining sugar, give it a stir and then you want to pour the yeast over the top and set it aside and leave it for about 20 minutes until it's gone all frothy. Next you want to get a large mixing bowl, pour in the flour and make a well in the center and get the yeasty mixture from the saucepan, pour it straight into the center with a wooden spoon, give it a mix. At this point we don't want to knead it, we just want to form a dough and once you've formed a dough, get some cling film with some oil on top and then leave that in a warm place to, to rise for about an hour and a half. We're now going to start making the filling for the dough and if you haven't bought chopped almonds you can chop them yourself with a knife or you can put them into a chopper and you want to get your almonds, raisins, sugar and cinnamon, put it into a bowl and just give it a mix and that is the filling done. Once your dough is doubled in size, we can now whack this onto a floured work surface and knead it for a good 10 minutes until the dough has become elastic and smooth. The recipe now says to divide the dough into equal pieces of the size of a walnut and clearly I don't know what size of a walnut is because this is where I messed the recipe up. We can now grease a 10 inch cake tin with some butter and then we're going to roll these bits of dough into a ball shape. It is quite easy to roll the dough into shape. All you need to do is make sure your hand is constantly in contact with the work surface. Give a bit of tension on it and just roll it with your hand against the work surface. Once all your balls are rolled out, you want to get your cake tin and you want to create a bottom layer with some of the balls. You then want to spread some butter with a pastry brush over the top of them. And we're going to use half of our filling and just place that on top as well. Once you put half the filling on, you now want to get the rest of the balls, place them on top, coat them with butter as well and finish off with the remaining half of the filling over the top. You now want to preheat your oven to 150 degrees Celsius or 300 degrees Fahrenheit and you also want to cover the dough now with a piece of plastic wrap which has been oiled and you want to leave that for 30 to 40 minutes until the buns have risen. So once the buns have risen, you want to put these into the oven on the middle shelf for 30 minutes and then after 30 minutes you want to put the oven up 200 degrees Celsius or 400 degrees Fahrenheit and you want to cook that for 15 to 20 minutes or until the buns have got a nice brown colour on top. So once the buns have finished cooking in the oven, remove them, put them onto a wire rack and let them cool for 5 minutes and then using a baking sheet place this on top of the buns and flip them over. Take the tin off the bottom but be careful and remember it is hot and then you want to flip this over back onto the wire rack. As you can see this isn't really what it's supposed to look like. I obviously didn't make the balls of dough small enough. They're definitely not walnut sized pieces but it tastes nice. I probably wouldn't cook it again. If you guys have got any tips or suggestions let us know. If you like this video please give it a thumbs up and if you want to see more of this kind of stuff Remember to subscribe to my channel and press that bell notification to never miss a new video.